guest today is Brian Glenn. Brian, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you, David. Good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been quite some time. What I have think. you been doing? Um, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you don't just have one day job, do you? <laughs> you <have a> bunch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's what most people are doing now. Uh, however, uh, the last time we met, you were helping me train a model uh, to read license plates readers. I don't know if you remember that. Barely. It was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, since we've, uh, we're, we're actually working on some negotiations with the city of Chicago to uh, still help collect revenue, but in a much less punitive uh, way using machine learning. So, okay. uh, but but yeah, I think uh, during some of my downtime, obviously uh, government contracting takes quite some time. Uh, there are long sales cycles. Uh, this past summer, I took a, a book writing class uh -huh. uh, with a professor from Georgetown, and uh, that's what I want to come to talk with you about. Thank you. You're writing a book. Yes. Tell me about it. Yeah. Uh, the name of the book is Life Adds Up. Uh, I went through a couple of different names because I wasn't sure uh, what it should be called. I just knew what the contents needed to be. Uh, that's more uh, important, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, particularly as a founder, a technology founder, I found myself uh, trying to compete with other people not understanding that each vertical of technology requires uh, a different level of intensity, understanding, and there are certain things that uh, contribute to those outcomes. And uh, you know, artificially raising money um, puts people in a place where uh, it allows them to seem successful temporarily, but in actuality, there's been no real value added. Mm -hmm. And so I've been trying to focus more on how can I add value with my company and uh, in turn that led to the book. So, okay. um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, add value is a, I was a consultant for many years. Okay. And that was a phrase I used over and over yeah, again. Yeah, absolutely. Adding value. So absolutely. If you're paying me money, I want to provide more value. Than so I did consulting as well before yeah, so this. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, well, how do you relate that to this book? Tell me about that. Yeah, so uh, one of the parts in the book I think that a lot of people have started to take interest in uh, which is uh, Bill Gates. Uh, Bill obviously a very successful founder now yep. in philanthropy. He's I'm doing taking advantage of the company he founded. <laughs> right now. They're, they're yeah. me a paycheck yeah. twice a month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, his philanthropy uh, has been truly amazing in terms yeah. of the types of uh, ambition he has uh, towards uh, diseases, uh, you know, the, the ramifications of, you know, health and society, all sorts of things. Um, uh, but uh, when I started to dig deep into to his, his, his life and his work, I was able to start uh, kind of deducing uh, his evolution as a person. Uh, I think that very early on, uh, he was a super arrogant person, uh, to say the least. Uh, mm -hmm. I know there's been a lot of talks about that. Uh, but but when you start looking and thinking about him and Paul Allen and the things they were able to accomplish as teenagers, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, here's a guy who who was sneaking over to University of Washington in the middle of the night, stealing credits from a computer. Uh, you know, Malcolm Gladwell has a great book. Uh, oh, outliers. Called outliers. Yeah. Outliers, yeah. And uh, he talks about the rule of 10,000 hours and, you know, how Bill and, you know, Steve Jobs, all those types of people put in 10,000 hours. Uh, but what's not, I think, uh, one piece that he could have took that a step further is talking about uh, how those 10,000 hours at that particular age uh, really created uh, a level of value that nobody else in the world could add, particularly when you think about uh, the deal that he did with IBM. Uh, when he bought MS-DOS, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an operating system that nobody really saw a lot of value in and converted that, it really was a, a play back to what he did when they uh, put BASIC on the MITS Altair 8800. Okay. It was the exact same uh, playbook. Mm -hmm. And that, that sort of uh, cavalier, that instinct to be able to do that, I think that uh, it, it's well served in technology founders as well. Yeah. So, uh, but 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 uh, one one other thing uh, about Bill that I, I I lay out in the book, 
Uh, most people think that because his parents are already somewhat successful, successful, not somewhat uh, relatively successful to, mm -hmm. to his, uh, but, but they, they attribute all of his success to that, and that's not true. There are a lot of people that lived in his neighborhood that had the same access to everything he had, mm -hmm. uh, but his mentality, his mindset is what allowed him to be able to do that, and I think that for, for any startup founder, anybody in technology, you cannot go into a closed mind, you cannot, you know, a famous example would be Albert Einstein and, and, and the quantum theory and the note he wrote to Max Planck. And basically, I'm not familiar with this note. Oh, okay. Well, uh, to, to surmise, uh, he basically told him that he missed the boat and that the, where he was you going. You told Max Planck that yeah. he was wrong? <laughs> yes. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and so uh, because he had, he had grappled with quantum uh, physics for so long himself that he could not see uh, a breakthrough in it. Uh, the only thing I think that he gave a little bit of, um, uh, you know, uh, the only thing he acknowledged was, was you know, um, uh, photo light and how that was able to generate energy. But he really never looked at anything beyond that, and he couldn't grasp. He couldn't grasp it, and so he just did away with it. And I think that that's the mentality of a lot of people uh, that they can't figure certain things out, and they just push away from it. And I don't think that's how technology works. Technology, we need to take time to really think deeply about problems and be super decisive, have conviction, and work towards them, but be open and willing to say we were wrong when those times present themselves. You know? Is that what your book is about? Is about uh, that thought process, that uh, idea yeah. of, of uh, starting starting with something and discarding the things that don't work? Yeah. So there are a couple of, uh, I think, um, attributes that people have to have or things that contribute to their success. Uh, one of the biggest are models or role models as we like to say, uh, but, but exposure to things, I already alluded to that, uh, but, but also things like self-confidence. There are so many different traits that a person uh, can, can really invest in, in themselves to be able to help better their outcome, so yes. Yes. All right. You, we were talking earlier off camera about this idea that um, things that you do in your life they're they're cumulative. In other words, they, they they things that may not seem to have any impact today may have a big impact later on because yeah. of other things that happen later. Yeah. On. Can, you, can you expand on that? Yeah. So um, I I know personally, uh, not to venture off too far, but personally, I have seen um, evidence of seemingly unrelated people and incidents that have come and come back to add value at a later point in my life. Um, as I studied out some of these people uh, in the book that I talk about, um, beyond Bill Gates, uh, and they range from you know a lady named Fularun Sho Alakiji, who I met uh, about six or seven years ago, uh, she came here to Chicago, Nigerian um, billionaire, oil baroness, mm. and she started off as a secretary in a bank. Wow. Well, because her, her father wouldn't pay for her to go to law school because he says, why would I pay for a woman to go to school and she's going to lose the family name? Well, her ambition, her drive wouldn't allow her to, to, to just sit back. The point in that story, though, that I think is super interesting is she wound up uh, becoming successful and buying a, a piece of land. That piece of land that she bought, she uh, happened to be on a plane with some American businessman that wanted to explore oil in Nigeria. She petitioned the government for I think six or seven years asking them to allow her to drill on that, that, that piece of land. Um, they wouldn't allow her and finally they relented. Even when they relented, she still had to find an exploratory partner, a big, you know, uh, you know, big Texaco or something like right. that to, to explore for her because she's not she has drilling capabilities. Uh, it took her several years of knocking door to door on some of those large companies, those conglomerates. Nobody would do it, and some people had already said, "We've already explored your land. It's it's too deep. It's too much to explore." Well. Uh, she wound up getting a deal done and they hit oil on her land and uh, at one point she was uh, Forbes ranked her as the richest uh, black woman in the world uh, super successful but the point is in that story is her buying that land seemingly was unrelated her business efforts that led her to buy that land 
would not dictate her being successful, would not dictate her life in philanthropy now. And I think that uh, in life, even to a smaller extent, that's how they all snowball as they just continue to build upon themselves. You have any examples from your own life? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so how about uh, the fact that uh, for myself, I remember uh, me starting this company now, uh, Service. Uh, I remember uh, one day I was, uh, I got a, a, a letter in the mail from the city of Chicago saying that I owed $300 in parking tickets from 10 years before. Uh, I couldn't challenge it. There was nothing I could do. I was like, this is against due process. Uh, you know, wh how, how do I go about this? Well, I called the number on the letterhead. Uh, it was some, uh, some law firm, and I'll leave their name out even though I know what it is. Uh, <laughs> basically a collection agency. Yeah, that's it's correct. Right. It was a collection agency. Uh, I called, I said, ma'am, you know, um, I don't understand why I'm getting tickets, you know, nine, almost 10 years later, uh, but I have no recollection of this. Can you provide me any proof? She said, sir, you either pay the tickets or you don't and we'll suspend your license. And I said, oh my God, <laughs> what, what, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Furthermore, I, I thought, well, what about the people who don't even have the money? Because it was a big irritation for me, but sure. there are people that literally don't have 300 yeah. bucks. I mean, there was a study that's, done by the Federal Reserve uh, Bank uh, last year that says that the most of America cannot cover $400 without using a credit card. Mm -hmm. So I was the, me at a period in my life when yeah, I was there. Yeah, absolutely, as have I. So uh, at any rate, uh, back to this, um, I did not know that that experience uh, would eventually lead me to starting a company to help solve that problem yeah. of helping people pay their parking tickets and paying bills to municipalities with a means-driven system. And mm. that's what we're working on now. I have yeah. some, some people with, at the University of Chicago, and a, a story in the story, uh, the, the, one of the, the researchers that are work with me, economist uh, Jean-Pierre Dubé, I happened to be walking inside of the Gleacher Center downtown Chicago, mm -hmm. And uh, I picked up the, the Booth Review, the Chicago Booth Review, a magazine that I barely read, but I picked it up. I'm surfing through and I see machine learning on there. I said, hey, I read the article and I find that he's done some work germane to what I'm doing and he comes on board and starts working with me. So you reached out to him. Yes, said, that's correct. Oh, but that's, that, those are examples of how things that seemingly unrelated uh -huh. just wind up circling back and coming and adding tremendous value. And I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without John Pierre. That's, that's, that's an understatement. That's standard. Yeah. How does this relate back to technology? Uh, so uh, I, so obviously, I'm, I'm a startup founder in technology. Uh, Obvious to me, not to them. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's how I sought you out, because I needed help <laughs> with technology. Right. Uh, uh, but but um, I've come across being inside of an incubator, being in an accelerator program, being around a, a, a whole lot of uh, founders that are starting companies, uh, I, I realized that without this sort of mindset uh, or these tools, you really won't have a company that's adding much value because uh, your focus will be on short-term gains and you won't be able to really think big picture. Mm -hmm. And when, you, when it comes to technology, uh, it's not really incremental. There are big quantum leaps in terms of value being added. I mean, one day something happens and then boom, a revolution starts. <laughs> I mean, right. you know, you know uh, these are not small little tweaks. These are huge leaps. And uh, uh, my point is, is that uh, in the book, I, I try to lay out uh, my case for why anyone related to uh, technology, but even regular people, uh, should be approaching our life in a way that is not about uh, individual isolated events defining you. Particularly, you raise money, okay, you're doing well, you have some wins, all of a sudden you're successful. Well, I look around and I think of companies uh, that have failed in the past year like we work, and you know, as you start digging deeper and deeper into those stories, it is amazing 
how many people give founders the benefit of the doubt and not understanding that they never really even had an intention of doing the types of things that uh, people thought that they were going to do. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by it, they never even, it's one thing to say that uh, I'm holding you accountable for something that you did wrong. It's a whole nother thing to say, uh, I didn't even think that you were capable of doing that because now it's back on me. I mm -hmm. have to protect myself in some way. Mm -hmm. And in society, uh, we're far too trusting uh, far too, far too, uh, you know, uh, just, just uh, really have placed not the amount of thought we need to into technology and how it affects people. And to be a founder, you really need to think about that. We're seeing things play out, Facebook, Instagram, uh, those founders leaving. Uh, you're looking at the WhatsApp uh, leaders leaving. And they're all pointing back and saying, hey, there's some stuff going on here that we didn't intend on happening and we can't control it. Mm -hmm. And not that those things are, are inherently bad or good, it's just the fact that without deliberately moving uh, the needle uh, forward, uh, you will not have the particular outcome because you didn't, you didn't even know what you're doing. You just want to do something cool, right? Yeah. Last thing I'll say, Tristan Harris, uh, former uh, Google, uh, officer, um, he he was involved in the psychology uh, of basically persuading people to use the platform. Mm -hmm. uh, as I found out, there's a story in the book I talk about um, Google and how I um, did one of those recaptchas. Uh, you know when you have to uh, click images and say, uh, you know, is that a tree? Right. Is that a, is that a car? Is that a red hydrant? To prove you're not a robot. I, exactly. Well, before it became public knowledge. I knew that that was way, they were using us for something. I didn't know what it was. And it really hit home with me. One day I was uh, on uh, Google, filling out a Google form, and I got a picture of my street right in front of my house. <laughs> and I, that had never happened to me before. What are the that, odds of that? That's exactly, that, that, I, I, I use that exact phrase in the book. What are the odds of that? Um, well, I really took some time to think and I said, what is this all about? And the only thing that hit me was they have to be using this for uh, self-driving cars. That's the only logical explanation. Well, this was 2016, 2017, somewhere around there. Then I read an article a year and a half later that says Google is using uh, people unaware to train for autonomous vehicle driving. Oh, okay. So by clicking on the, yeah. that I recognize what a tree is, yeah. then... The, the car can recognize a tree and exactly. not run into the Exactly, yeah. because who better to train than yeah. you, because sure. it's your street. <laughs> you, know where, you know where the alleys oh, are. So they deliberately, they knew your location. Yeah, absolutely. Based on absolutely. Uh, your preferences absolutely. in Google, and therefore they, absolutely. they showed you absolutely. your street. Absolutely, <laughs> very powerful tools. <laughs> And if you can be, you can be, and I'm not saying that that was evil of them. I'm just saying that you have to be deliberate, and that's 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 part of the book. It's just being deliberate. Being deliberate, yeah. And I, you, it's one thing that struck me as you said something about something suddenly happens, and you're very successful all of yeah. a sudden. And I related that back to the the story of the Nigerian lady who suddenly, yeah, she's an instant millionaire. Yeah, it wasn't suddenly billionaire way, or billionaire. It's <laughs> billionaire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it wasn't really suddenly. Right. It's just there was a watershed moment, Absolutely. but there were all these things that led up to it that Absolutely. she refused to uh, accept her, her father's limitations. Absolutely. She decided to buy land. She decided to pursue oil drilling rights. She, she decided just to turn and talk Absolutely. to somebody on an airplane. Absolutely. And engage them in conversation Absolutely. and pick their, uh, just all these things yeah. that uh, didn't yield res any results at the time, yeah. any tangible results until instant you know instant rich, yeah. get rich yeah. quick it yeah. seems like the yeah. perception of that is yeah. just yeah yeah crazy and, that, and that's wrong. and that's crazy the, wrong. that's the narrative <laughs> that it, it all turns all of a sudden but the people that are chipping away um, you find out that you know everybody knows them yeah. well how is it everybody knows them <laughs> because they've been doing this for 10 or 15 years before you even became aware right. it's amazing it happens with artists all sorts of things so yeah i think that that's uh, important great 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 find in the book uh what's the name of the book life adds up life adds and uh, when will it be available it will it will be published uh it will be available to buy in april of this year april 2020. okay 
Um, and uh, what are you self-publishing self or what? So there's a, a group called New Degree Press uh -huh. uh, out of the East Coast that has been working with me. Uh -huh. uh, been, been, a, been, a, been an experience, I tell right. you that, working with publishers. So. Sure, <laughs> I, I have yeah. some experience with that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but to, to be able to get the book, um, you can go to my website at capitalglenn.com, C-A-P-I-T-A-L-G-L-E-N-N.com. Uh, parts of it are available now? Uh, you will be able to, the uh, digital version, we'll probably get it up on Amazon, on uh, Kindle or whatever, uh, e-reader. Yeah, yeah. yeah e-book, yeah. <laughs> e e-book. That'll probably be available uh, here at the end of February, somewhere in March. It'll yeah. actually be available in print in April. Excellent. I wish you the best of luck with it. Thank you so Brian, much, David. Thank you. Thank you. As we close this out, I just want you to remember some of our conversations, uh, particularly out of my book, Life Adds Up, and technology founders like Bill Gates that have went on to do extraordinary things. It would not have been possible without friends like Paul Allen or some of the people that helped him along the way. Similarly, in your life, you're going to need people to help you to get to where you are. I'm reminded of the quote, uh, no man is an island of himself. And uh, if you remember that and you continue to evolve in your mindset and be open and willing to take what life throws at you and to make something out of it, you'll be well on your way to success. So I hope that you continue moving forward. Thank you.